working the faith muscle. Hi, welcome to another episode of Mike Responds. My name is Moira Widboom. I'm on staff here at the International House of Prayer. Today we just want to talk about uh, the topic of healing in the church. What is the role of divine healing, especially as we face a global pandemic? Episode of Mike Responds. My name is Moira Widboom. I'm on staff here at the International House of Prayer. Today we just want to talk about uh, the topic of healing in the church. What is the role of divine healing, especially as we face a global pandemic? You know, Mike, Mike I woke up this morning with the pain of the news that 5,000 more people had died in our country. <coughs> Overnight, 4,000 died last night, the night before. Over 2 million people worldwide have been infected with the pandemic virus. It just seems like if there was ever a time for healing to be manifesting in the church, it's now. It's the living witness of having a theology that we can't demonstrate that speaks against us. He's a dear friend. I have such affection and respect for him. We have such a great time. We spent hours today talking and laughing and inspiring. And I have read his books, watched his videos, stole his material shamelessly. So why are we not seeing more healing power manifested in the church? And is it even relevant for today? It's the living witness of having a theology that we can't demonstrate that speaks against us. Excellent question, Moira. And I appreciate your years here on our staff and being a part of our leadership team. And I just care, I love the way you carry yourself before the Lord and the way that you love the Word of God. Well, the subject of healing, you know, much of the body of Christ, they think that healing passed away. Mike Bickle is using a very common false dichotomy argument. He makes his opponents sound so bad that you are forced to agree with him. The truth is there are tons of Christians who believe in, in uh, healing. They, they pray for healing. They ask God to heal them of sicknesses, as well as going to the doctors, just like Mike Bickle does. The difference is most Christians don't assume that it has to happen. We don't tell God what to do. God is sovereign. God can heal us, but it doesn't mean that he always will heal us. That's the position that he doesn't allow to be represented. And obviously, we don't. Hundreds of millions of believers are very, very confirmed and, and convicted and sure that healing is for today. Even though Mike says that he's convicted that healing is for today, he's going to spend most of this video talking about why it's not actually happening or it isn't being shown. And so, why is it there more healing? I'd like to suggest to you that if everyone believed miracles were for today, actually could demonstrate them, there would no longer be a group of people that didn't believe they were for today. Well, one reason we have to believe the Word of God and we have to have a greater revelation of Jesus, not just as the one that forgives our sins, but the one who heals our body. I mean, he uh, bore our, our, I mean, by his stripes we are, are healed. He bore our sin. He bore our sickness. He bore our judgment. And so healing's made available through what Jesus did. This is basically word of faith teaching. Healing has been made available by what Jesus did. But then you've got to jump through certain hoops in order to get the healing. And healing's available in this age. Of course, ultimately, every believer walks in perfect healing. It's called a resurrected body in the age to come. But we all know that. Why aren't more people being healed right now? I'd like to suggest to you that if everyone believed miracles were for today, actually could demonstrate them, there would no longer be a group of people that didn't believe they were for today. First of all, I think more are being healed than we're aware of. Oh yeah, Christians are healing people with COVID-19 all over the place. They just, they don't want to make a big fuss about it. They're doing it quietly, sure. I think a lot of folks in their desperation are rising up and going, you know what, I haven't ever prayed for the sick, though I believe in it. I'm going to reach, step out and start doing it. So I got a feeling more has happened. But the other question is, why not much more than we are seeing today? You know, one encouraging thing for us is that the police station of Kansas City, I mean, the, the top leadership called us and some others as well and said, can our police officers drive through your drive, your, your parking lot? We know we're all in shutdown. We have 10 people in the prayer room. And would somebody come out and pray for them if they asked for it? I mean, isn't it amazing that the top leadership of the police force is asking that? Not just of us, but there are several other ministries. And Yeah, that's nice. That's a good thing to have a rapport with the police department. Now, what about the lack of healings? What about that? 
So healing is increasing, but the question is, why isn't it increasing more and more? It's the living witness of having a theology that we can't demonstrate that speaks against us. Well, I think a lot of folks in the Western world is where I'm, we're, we're living. They've not been desperate for healing. Healing's kind of been an add-on. Where in the Bible are we told that God promises to heal us, but only if we're desperate enough? We have so many answers for our sicknesses in the medical arena, and I really appreciate the medical arena. But it's like, you know, if I get a headache, I'm just going to take an aspirin. I'm not going to talk to Jesus, and I'm not going to even exercise that faith that my family member does. I'm not going to exercise that muscle. I'm just going to give them an aspirin, give them a little medicine, and move on. So I believe that just the neglect of working the faith muscle, <coughs> muscle of faith, <coughs> in everyday life and the neglect of growing in revelation of Jesus as the healer, that's a human side of it. Translation, it's your fault. Now start working that faith muscle. But there's another side of it too. And this is, I'm gonna address this on my Wednesday 7 p.m.s. I'm taking them for the next number of weeks and, and gonna be talking about topics more in depth for a longer period of time and I'm gonna Talk about this. This is a strange one. The glory, but also the perils of the healing ministry. Like the perils of the healing ministry? What would that be? Even though Mike Bickle and guys like him have been talking about this new generation of super Christians who are going to heal everybody and it's going to change the world, they've been talking about that for decades. Now he's going to come up with an elaborate excuse as to why none of that is happening. There are a number of challenges when the healing and ministry multiplies in power that are not obviously uh, apparent to many people in the body of Christ. For instance, if somebody could move in the power that Jesus moved in, I mean at the level, I don't mean a miracle here or there, but regularly, the social implications would be beyond anything we could imagine. Imagine, this is my theory, but I think it to be true. If this guy prayed for somebody's blind eyes to open out in the parking lot today, and 10 more blind people came and all 10 of them were healed, and then the word got out, social media, then 10 paralytics and all 10 of them were healed. I don't mean one out of those 20. 10 out of 10 blind, 10 out of 10 paralytics. By tomorrow afternoon, Arrowhead Stadium would be filled. Well, we're in the shutdown, so that doesn't, right, that doesn't count right now, but my point is... You and I don't have the luxury of living a powerless gospel. The implications of a healing ministry, millions would gather in a 24-hour notice if 10 paralytics in a row, 10 dead people, 10 blind eyes open, 10 for 10 in a 24-hour period, they would gather in the stadium. Then the social implications of that would be beyond anything any of us are thinking about. People like Mike Bickle and Bill Johnson and many of their friends have been talking about how vitally important it is to do these gigantic healing events, and now he's talking about why it's such a bad idea. And this is all based on the idea that supernatural signs and wonders are what people need in order to believe in Christ, which is not what the Bible teaches. Let's look at a part of the video I did of Bill Johnson's speech at the One Thing Conference back in 2016. I want you to notice it says there were three cities in which most of Jesus' miracles were done. The number of miracles, the detail of these miracles was so extraordinary that they couldn't possibly all be recorded. So we're talking about a tremendous volume of supernatural interventions that were done in three cities. And Jesus made a statement. He said, if the works that you saw as religious cities, cities that have had overexposure in some ways to the things of God, if what you have taken for granted, what you saw but didn't change your lifestyle to embrace, if they would have been done in the sin-filled cities, the cities you have a bent to condemn, if these miracles were done there, they would have repented. So what does that tell me? It tells me the key to the Sodom and Gomorrahs of our day are signs and wonders people 
that walk the streets, that can openly demonstrate with a lifestyle of purity and a lifestyle of power how to get rid of the devils, how to get rid of the torments, how to get rid of the afflictions, the infirmities that are in people's lives. It's the key to the sin-filled cities. This is staggeringly bad. Bill took a Bible passage and flipped it upside down. This passage clearly shows us that miracles don't always cause repentance in people's hearts, but Bill is teaching the exact opposite. This is a man who twists the Word of God all the time, and he's really good at it. His audience is eating it up because he's pretty much infallible within this group. If you think I'm being too harsh, please continue watching to see where this goes. Christians oftentimes stand back and condemn because of the wickedness in these cities, feeling somewhat smug and spiritual because, because we, our act is cleaned up and theirs isn't. And if they continue, look at Sodom, look at Gomorrah, and Jesus brings a storefront uh, to the forefront, excuse me, a story about how these cities would actually have repented. Bill is explaining this Bible passage 100% wrong. It's not that hard to understand either. Let's look at the passage that he's butchering. Matthew 11, 20, 26. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. This is the main point of this passage. It's right there. In spite of Jesus, God himself performing miracles, the people did not repent. A really good question to ask is this. If performing signs and wonders is the key to causing people to repent and believe, why did it fail when Jesus himself did it? And if performing even more signs and wonders is needed, why didn't Jesus go back to all of those towns and just do more miracles? Woe to you, Chorazan! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? You will be brought down to Hades, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. Jesus is condemning them for their unbelief. And to drive home the point, he's saying that the most awful people that they knew about from the Old Testament days weren't even as bad as them. Jesus is not saying, if everybody would just conjure up some more miracles, we could get everyone to believe. This is so obvious. He just did a whole ton of miracles, and the people refused to repent and believe. So while Bill Johnson claims that we all need to go out there and do tons of signs and wonders and everybody will start believing, his good friend is saying kind of the opposite. He's saying, yeah, we don't want to have too many signs and wonders because that would create all these other problems. Number one, the guy being used would assume his messaging was right and he was in agreement with God on everything or most things. Maybe he's not. The people would assume that. Powerful people in the community, the powerful politicians, the people with the money and wealth, they would demand things of this guy that he wouldn't even imagine would come. The stigma that would follow, the, the jealous ministries that would rise up. There are so many ripple effects. So he was asked a particular question, why aren't we healing these people with this COVID-19 thing? And he changes the subject without saying so. He's changed the subject to this scenario where this super healer guy gains all of this power and becomes too powerful all at once and all these other bad things happen. That wasn't the question that he was supposed to be addressing, but it's a great diversion technique. Now listen to this next little piece of incoherent rambling and see if you can make any sense of it, because I can't. That's not my problem to make sure we don't get anointed. But when I think of the healing anointing, I think of a whole lot more implications because at the end of the age, there is going to be that level of healing anointing. And I believe the healing anointing and the manifest power is increasing and increasing. We should believe for it. There is going to be that level of healing anointing. And I believe the healing anointing and the manifest power is increasing and increasing. We should believe for it. We don't have to make sure we don't get to that level. We don't have to make sure we don't get to that level. But I'm saying God the Father is not missing it and forgetting what's going on when he's kind of letting it grow little by little because he understands some of the social, the social, the social implications of it. I got about eight more points to make on this. but No, Mike, that's okay. I'm sure those other eight points are great, but you've already given us so much. But I'm going to save that for one of my Wednesday 7 p.m. teachings. And then the demonic kingdom is going to have the multiplying of false miracles. False miracles? Hmm. What would that look like? 
Look at the leg on our left. That's where all the action is. That's what's actually being manipulated. You can see that Todd is actually pivoting or shifting the foot of the so-called long leg so that the heels match. And they're gonna be in context to the real ones. It's gonna be quite a drama around the subject of healing, but good question. Hey, thanks for keeping things upbeat, Mike, and uh, good job at dodging any kind of coherent answer to the serious question that she asked. Just seems like if there was ever a time for healing to be manifesting in the church, it's now. But let's pray for people now. What I'd like for you to notice, <clears throat> It didn't say pray for the sick. But let's pray for people now. It didn't say pray for the sick. It said heal the sick. Yeah, well, Bill, we're not healers. I know. Let's keep moving forward. forward. Let's get our hands out of our pocket. Is it rude to put your hands in your pockets? Yeah, we can't touch people right now. We're not supposed to. But you know what? Healing works even if you don't lay hands on them. You speak the name of Jesus over them. It still works. Sure, Mike. Yeah, whatever you say. Basta! Well, by this time next week, Shasta County will be headed for the state's most restrictive tier in the blueprint for a safer economy, the purple tier. Some people in Reading think it's because of the COVID-19 outbreak among Bethel School of Ministry, BSSM. It didn't say pray for the sick. It said heal the sick. I have read his books, watched his videos, stole his material shamelessly, been instructed by the Lord through him. I love you, Bill. Thank you for coming here. Bill has this just relentless resolve to teach about the goodness of God's heart. The Lord is good. And that is what this book is about. Just give a minute on that before you take off and begin your message, if you don't mind. I want him to get this book just seems like if there was ever a time for healing to be manifesting in the church, it's now. The tragedy in this day is that we have many people filled with knowledge that cannot demonstrate what they know and what they believe. This is a strange one. Basta!